Well, leadership first off is um, number one, but the whole focus is positivity, right? Mm -hmm. Belief in other people, wanting to inspire them. If you want people to come with you and go on the journey with you, you've got to make them feel engaged, empowered, and welcome. Richard Forte presents. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Richard Forte Presents in Sweet 16. I am so happy to be here today because I know we're going to be laughing because we can hardly contain ourselves before we're even starting. My special guest today is the one and only Rod Carley, the writer, professor, teacher, inspirer, thespian, cat producer, wrangler, cat wrangler. Pie lover. Here he is. What? Thanks for coming. Richard, thank you for having me. It's... Yeah. it's um, uh, we were just saying before we were laughing as the cameras were starting to roll just because you really are somebody who to me exudes this positive energy and when we were talking about what it is that we're trying to do here <laughs> yeah, is we're yeah, trying yeah. to spread a bit of that and we need it and we need it definitely and the arts for me is a way into how we affect each other you're a writer Yes. That is, I think, ultimately the one where you get to kind of really get into people's head, isn't it? Well, yes. And, and I think there's something about, um, well, it all goes back to storytelling, right? And, and, that, and that's what I love is the telling of stories and what it means to be human. And, I, and, I, and that's when whether I've been doing theater or any art form or teaching. It all comes down to that, right? Mm -hmm. We're all on this dust ball spinning together and we've all got each other. Mm -hmm. And so we're all out here for each other, right? So the storytelling of what it is to mean something on this planet. So that's always engaged, engaged me, right? So that's the core. That's, that's the, the core, core. But, you know, and I look at the world and, you know, we got so many problems and, and, you know, we look at it right now and we're dealing with, you know, what have we got? We got, we got global warming and we're dealing with racism and we're dealing with, you know, Just systemic uh, all issues. the systemic issues, right? And, 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 and people having the right to be, you know, fluid and gender fluid and all that, right? And, and there's great change that's happening, right? But, so I think myself, I like to write using satire, parody, yeah. comedy, because you can sort of be a bit more subversive, mm -hmm. right? And look at corrective ideas about what we should be or what is better. But by doing it with humor, it's a little bit easier to swallow, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Not all issues can you touch with humor, but the ones that I can, I tend to, to write about. And I enjoy doing that, right? That's what I find I enjoy doing. It's kind of like a, the all-licensed fool back yes. in the Middle Ages, right? Where you can, can look at society and as the writer, you can do that. And I think also about the writing, is, it's, a, it's a solitary act, the creation, yeah. right? right? Mm -hmm. And so as much as I love collaborating with other artists, there's something really kind of grounding and tranquil about just living in your own head and your mm. own thoughts and, and, and writing six hours a day and, and, and telling stories, right? And then eventually you get your editor involved and the publisher and all of that and more people get involved as you get towards, the, towards publishing it, but the initial creative process so that in the end you're, you're kind of relying on yourself, right? To, and, so, and, and there's something about that that I've been exploring as a writer mm -hmm. that I, I really enjoy and also I, you know, I love music, but so I love the sound of language. And I think in every different art form, there's a, that, that, that hit moment that just makes mm -hmm. you kind of go, whoa. Mm -hmm. And for me, a lot of it is when I get the right word hit. Mm -hmm. And it might be a pun, mm -hmm. it may be the structure of the language, I don't know. But, but when I get one of those, and, and it's not easy, right? I mean, it's, no. it's not easy, right? Uh, I was going to... Well, you know what? And I think, well, I know I think about, you know, a lot about what you say, you know, yeah. and I, cause I, talk, I do, I mean, I talk to people about it, you know, and I know, I know so many brilliant artists, right? But not all of them are practicing their art. Yeah. And really, in the end, a lot of what it comes down to is that old cliche of 5% inspiration, 95% perspiration. Yeah. Are you willing to do... The, the grunt and grind work, right? And that, and then, you know, are you really the musician? Practice and practice and practice. You know, as a writer, you only have the discipline where you sit and you write six hours a day, right? And, 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 you know, and that in the end, 
right? It, it, no pun intended, but yeah. it does tell the story, yeah, right? It does. So yeah. what is your process like today? So I don't, okay. so first of all, we talked yes. about comedy. There's like, I have 10 questions I want to ask sure, all sure, at sure, once. Sure, sure. And you touched on so many things that I want to get back to. But first of all, you were nominated recently for a comedy writing, uh, well, I, not uh, recently, but in your yeah, last yeah, book, my, my Kinmount. Most, my Kinmount, it was uh, one of 10 books that was long listed long for list. the Stephen Leacock Memorial Medallion for Humor. Congratulations. Is, thank you, and that, that was amazing. And then it also received the silver medal for Best Regional Fiction Canada East from the Independent Publisher Book Awards uh, this past year, uh, which are based out of the, the States, right? When that's sort of an international award. So that was, that was great, right? And, that's, and that was a big surprise. And, and you know, it's, it's very validating, right? Any, any of those, you know, uh, awards that one may get for one's craft. One's not doing it for the awards, obviously, but any award you might get is that shot in the arm that goes, yeah, just a reminder, you know what? That you're on the right path. Right. And you're, you know, and sticking with it. So because it's not easy. No, it's not. And easy. so I want to get into that hard process. Sure. No, because it, I don't want to say hard because I don't want to impose that it should be hard. But it no, is no, a discipline. It, no, it is a discipline. So and what does your discipline look like? OK. Today? And, and, you know, and again, every every artist has their process. So for me as a writer um, and I've evolved into this process is uh, I do a lot of outlining. So I, mm -hmm. let's say I'm, uh, I'm working on a novel right now, right, that I'm almost finished the first draft. So I work on the outline of like, okay, here's what the story's going to be. And then I start breaking it down chapter by chapter by chapter. So this is what happens to happen in this chapter, then this chapter, right? And, then, and I spend now about maybe seven or eight months doing that kind of research and pulling wow. that all together. And then I'm free to write the book. And I usually write in the summer because that's when I'm not teaching. So I have that block of time. And then the actual writing of the book can take three to four months for the first draft. So, you know, and that's, so that's about a year of your life there. And then another couple of years. So hold on, but at eight in the morning at a certain time, you're sitting down no matter be, what? Is that the type of thing yes, that you're yeah, doing yeah, where yeah, you're, you're blocking your day? Yeah, and, I'm saying, a, and I write in the morning. So this past summer, I'd be trying to be sitting down and writing by like 7.30 in the morning yeah. and write to about 12.30, 1 o'clock, and then that'd be it yeah. for the day, right? And... Um, and so then you get this kind of body memory working, you know, like anything, like dance, yeah. whatever it is. And so it's kind of like, oh, you know, the way your, your cat knows it. Okay, at it's five o'clock, I get my, you know, my, mm -hmm. my, my, my juicy food. Uh, my brain knows at 7.30, I'm sitting down with a coffee yeah. to start writing. Uh, so then, you, then there's, that's, like, that's about a year. And then you're doing another draft and another yes. draft, which takes another eight or 10 months. And then you're handing it over to an editor. And then you're working together maybe on two more drafts. You get to your final draft, you know, and then it works in with your publisher about trying to figure out, you know, marketing images and when it's going to be launched and getting advanced reviews. So it really is like from the day you sit down and start your outline to when the book may be coming out, it's about five years. Wow. Somewhere in there, right? Yeah. That's, it's a long haul process. Very different than doing theater where, you know, you plan the show, you rehearse it for yeah. three to eight weeks, depending on the nature of the rehearsal, run it for a week or two, and then it's done and you move on entirely different so it's a, a, a writing requires an incredible amount of patience so you must have always tenacity. wanted to do it as a kid okay here's a, as a kid okay here's a kid before i did theater so when i was a 12 year old boy i'd come home from school right and i had a little like you know little writing journal and i would draw i would write these christmas stories right each year for a grade six seven eight i did it and i would like come home from school and i'd sit down in the living room and i would write a story and i would illustrate a picture to go with it and I would do one every day after school, usually starting after Thanksgiving, so that by Christmas I'd written this Christmas story. Wow. And I just absolutely loved it. You, you were doing it then. Yeah, I was doing, you doing, it, doing then. it then. Well, and the thing that I've realized, you know, and, and, you know, and I've been working in the theater now 36 years, right, professionally since I left um, theater school. Mm -hmm. But this was pre-getting involved in theater, which didn't really happen to me until I was in grade nine. So what I've discovered in myself is I'm going back to the essence and pande you know, this was before the pandemic even, but of the essence of who I was as a kid, <laughs> right? When it was just kind of pure, and that's what I, I just loved doing that, and I, I really enjoyed writing. And so this is where you're at today, then the project you're, you're currently writing, this is how you feel? When I'm writing? Uh, yeah. yeah. I can't wait to see what that's well, like. like when, well, anything I'm writing, there's a part of me that goes back to that inner child yeah. of being 12 again, you know? And, the, and I think, I don't know, a lot of it is, you know, is, 
as I look at, I'm sort of what I call moving into the third stage of my life, right? If you look at it, I, mean, I look at it maybe in third. So I'm just about to start the third stage. Hopefully, it's a, a good long third stage. And writing is taking me into that stage. And it's freely going back to mm. a place in me that always brought me a sense of joy, brought me a sense of safety. It brought me a sense of um, creation and contributing. And it brought me a sense of enjoying getting my voice out there. Like, and this is before, you know, you get out in the real world and it tries to bang your voice down or bend your voice this way or all those things we're told that we shouldn't be doing or you should do it this way. You know, that's always going to be there. But the essence of our creativity needs to be the pure voice. And so much for me comes back from that inner child. So how difficult has it been in your life to get to that, to, like, to have the courage to put it out. Is that something that's been easy for you throughout your life as an artist, as somebody who can put, well, find yeah, his voice? I guess I think, so. I th and I think, you know, like I always talk to my students, right? When they, when they arrive for acting school, welcome to the island of lost toys. Because this is the place where all the misfits fit, mm. okay? And I do think in many ways, especially, especially when to be an actor, because who really wants to put themselves out there in front of all these people yeah. who in some ways are judging? judging. Yeah. yeah. You know, you've got to be a bit of a masochist, right? <laughs> um, you know, and, and any, uh, you know, musicians putting yourself out there, writing albums and music and, and writers and all yeah. of us that dance, all of us that do it, right? So I do think that there is something, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I think there's something universally missing in all of us. <laughs> There's something broken where we need outside validation for our work. Now, as we develop as artists... I'm laughing, but this is deep. Well, no, no, but it's true. But, but there, and I think we get to a point as we get older, and eventually we kind of we don't yeah. care. And, and, we, and it doesn't provide the validation. Our creative work, we just yeah. does. But there still is the aspect that you put a book out and, and you, you know, you're not just keeping it on your, on, your, on your computer. No, you're getting it published and it's going out to a readership. You're doing a stage play and people are coming to watch it or they're watching you perform on film or they're watching you do a musical gig or they're watching your dance show or they're going in and they're buying your pottery or your paintings, right? There is something in us that needs to be validated from outside mm. ourselves. And, um, and that voice, and that is... voice. And I think I, don't, I was, I mean, I was a very shy kid and, um, and had a big imagination. So I had this very crazy interior world going. And so, I don't know, finding my way in my art, I found a confidence in that and a place mm. where I fit and where I could find my voice, right? Because I, I would kind of call myself an extroverted introvert. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, you know, I can be out in public and go out and, and I can be very sociable and, again, I'm, and I'm, I'm comfortable speaking in front of people, but I'm also a person that really much needs to withdraw and fill the well and, and writing is very much that, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so yeah, but there's, I think there's in all of it, there's just that little bit. So what are you, so in that little thing that's <laughs> playing itself out right now in your creative, like in what you're creating now, we've talked a little bit about, I feel like we haven't even touched on anything and Darren gave me the five minute, five minutes ago. It's like crazy, but yeah, we're going to keep know. talking. Yeah, we'll keep talking. Okay. Yeah. So I, sorry, Darren, yeah. Yeah. it's going to be a longer show. This is how yeah. it's going to be. Okay. I got one uh, Carly here. <laughs> you didn't even get to like, <laughs> your name's one, on the show. it's you my show want. and there you go. It's my voice here. We, hey, Thanks, so Darren. Yeah, thank you. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> hey, so. What I'm getting at, what I, what I, this is really interesting to me as okay. somebody who's also trying to figure out how to have the courage to just not care, but also be sensitive and care. Like it's a, it is a balancing act. And what we do put out there, I think we attract too. Like we're, it's very, it's a very conscious act to write a book. You, you know what I mean? Like super conscious actually, much. because you are making commentary on the political you situation are, yes. of the day yes. or the what. Yes, it's, yes. It is definitely. Yeah. Um, an agenda, like there's, a, well, there's it, something to say. Yes, and I think that's important because what you're doing has to have meaning. So and what right now? I'm trying. What's what's doing that for you right now? Not what? in this old this this not this old book the the recent book, but the creative process you're in. Right at this exact second. At this exact exact second. second I'm really curious to know where you're at. Okay. Well, 
because you've done so much and people by the way will see your bio in the notes we're gonna have your sure, resume okay, okay. and like yeah, it's yeah, intense yeah. and crazy well, and i'm like do i try to memorize all this i can't memorize all this he's done so much so people go check what he's done and but this is why i'm asking this question is because after you've done so much mm -hmm. you've produced 125 the, i mean like there's, that, the yeah. list goes on so now what you know, now you enter this third phase okay. and you're in this new creative zone. I can tell, I can sense that you're getting at it with the okay, so, first, okay. third so, phase. So let me, okay, let me, well, okay, so first off, I've just finished this interconnected collection of short stories, right? That has been, recently been edited and uh, a guy named John Metcalf. So that's which, gonna come out? Soon. That's coming out in the summer of 22. Okay. Which I'm excited about, right? And that's, and they, they were a departure because I wrote them all in the first person and I, I only have a younger brother. And I've always thought in my life, what would it be like to grow up in a larger family? Because I've never had that sense of family, family, right? I mean, like my friends have become my bigger family, right? Yeah. You know, we choose our brothers and sisters in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to write a, a, a comic collection of stories about this guy, middle-aged guy, who's kind of stuck in a rut in middle age and, and he's in the middle of his siblings and he's trying to comprehend the world and dealing with mortality as you know, our, you lose your parents and, and friends and then just trying to comprehend the, the big ticket items, you know, like our mortality and gender and, uh, and instead of global warming and the apocalypse and all those yeah. different things, right? And then the sillier things like coconut cream pie, right? Or whatever, or, or you know. And uh, so that's, they were great fun to write because they were me sort of doing um, observational humor on how I see the world, right? And using humor as a way to sort of, from a very befuddled place, have a few answers yeah, when, we, when we don't, right? Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. I, I don't want to say too much about the new novel. Okay. All I can say is it's not a sequel to Kin Mount, but Kin Mount was the springboard for it. Interesting. And, uh, and, I, and I'm enjoying so it. So you're well in, you're in, you're deep into that. I'm, I'm two chapters away from the first draft of that. Wow. Of that. So that's been, and so that's going on. So how many projects do you do simultaneously, honestly? Quite a few. Well, the writing goes on, and then I get back busy at Canada, and I'm, you know, I'm yeah, teaching full teaching, time, right? So the writing then goes up, I get on the back burner, and you know, I'll work on weekends and and, and some evenings, and but but Canada then becomes, you know, yeah. the focus during the school year, and I still love teaching, and I still love right because there's nothing more exciting than watching a young actor get it when they make that eureka moment and discover a concept you've been talking about, and you see them bring it back in the work or something, and you see the, and you watch that growth. That's still that's really you know so. Yeah. Um, I still get a great rush out of doing that, so I'm going to continue with that, right? Yeah. Um, I think as I get older, um, I find now that what I, I bring to the table more is that compassion of just, just be in the moment, it's going to be okay, yeah. right? You're not going to lose You're an eye here. Panicked. Yeah, I don't think I was ever panicked, but I think I've, I've been driven, yeah, right? Great. But I think I was always driven in a much bigger, passionate, coming in and sometimes I think I would walk into a room and take all the air out of it because I was just, you know, sometimes I think a little too bigger than life for my own good. Now it's much more, you know, letting everyone know this is safe, okay? Now I, I'm holding the big net here. You can do whatever you want up on that trapeze and you're, you're gonna fall safely. So I'm gonna, and, and, and I won't cool. take you anywhere that I won't go first. Yeah. Kind of like, a, like an ego yeah. song, you know? And, and <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, yeah, enjoying that, right? And, and, and still enjoying um, um, theater projects and they come up and surprise me that I don't know what they're going to look like, right? And that's yeah. the great thing is still not knowing what's out there and what's going to happen, right? So I think over the years trusting more that I don't know what it's going to look like, but I do believe that creativity is infinite and that, you know, I believe in, in you know, a supreme being, a higher energy, all that, and that all inspiration is, is just channeling everything that's out there and staying open. You know, you're a conduit for it, right? If you get very closed off, like about, I'm never gonna share my ideas, and, right? Well, you're not gonna have any much longer because you're blocking the flow of the world, right? And so, and so on part of that, I also enjoy watching my colleagues work, mm. you know, in all different disciplines, uh, fellow authors and then musicians and then actors and, and, and other artists and, and then of course students that graduate from the program mm -hmm. that go on to create careers and, and, and now we're, they're coming, look at them rising up. Yeah. That's wonderful, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and you know, I'm, I still think I'm too young to talk about legacy and that's such a, you know, a, a daunting word, but on a small little L level right now, I, I look at some of my grads out there that have been out now 12, 13 years doing it going, 
right on. I, I mean, I thought, wow, you know, I helped, I helped you get there. Yeah. And that feels good, you know. And then, yeah. so I think the creation of the acting program at Canada, as well as being a really great boon for this community, yeah. uh, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's also um, serves so many young people that have yeah. found a place to find their voice. Whether they stay in acting or not, doesn't matter. Yeah. They just found their more of their authentic voice that's going to serve them, right? And and, sure. and they'll influence other people, right? Well, that's amazing. That is really, really, really inspiring. And I mean, it is a legacy. I wonder how much of what you've been able to do is because of. Uh, I'm, I'm curious about leadership. Leadership. As a final, as a final idea, because it se- seems to me that what you've accomplished in our community required leadership. I'm, I'm sure nobody, I'm, I won't make an assumption, have people just opened the doors for you everywhere and made this no, super you know easy what? for all no, of this no. to, to and happen I think, over the last 15 no, years? No, 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 because I would say, you know, now, I've been in North Bay, it'll be 23 years this fall. And I came here, and I'm not going to repeat this, my whole story of being here, because I think yeah. people have heard that, and they'll be like, oh my God, here we go. But, you know, I came here when I was um, uh, 36. So I've been out freelancing for, I guess, about 15 years since after school, right? All over doing things, right? Yeah. And lived in the trenches, and lived where you're just scraping by to get by, you know, and yeah. did it all, right? I was on the road most of my life, right, yeah. up till then. So when I came to North Bay, right, I was coming here just to do one show for the Gateway Theatre. We go, our country's good, I wanted to do uh, a beautiful script about the transformative, transformative power of theatre. And in doing so, I met a lot of old friends. When I was in acting school, there were all these other people from North Bay going to York with me. It's like, you know, so North Bay got into my DNA early and I didn't know why, right? You know, looking back on it now, it was probably like, Carly, this is your destiny. <laughs> right, I didn't know. So, um, and then, I, and then I did that show, and then I met some amazing people like Nancy Thompson. And but anyhow, the point being, there was talk from a few people that they'd wanted to have professional summer theater in North Bay. It never had happened, right? right. There'd been a, 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 a student group called Unicorn Theater back in the yeah. 80s with a bunch of amazing people, Art von Holtendorf, Blair Williams, Paul Tessier, all those guys, but nothing like a professional summer theater. So they asked me what was I interested in, and I was at a place, place in my life where I was looking for change. I didn't yeah. know what it looked like, yeah. right? Didn't yeah. know what it looked like. You said yes. I said yes. And so I started coming up here more, you know, because I had to do meetings, and we started, you know, got the idea of what we called the Nipissing Stage Company, and things with the flow, right? And, um, and then a businessman named Clyde Armstrong, who we sadly lost way too soon in 2004, but lovely, lovely man, it's part of his vision, he started taking me around to meet different couples in the community. Was that Cameron Armstrong's father? Yes, it was. Okay. Lovely man. Yeah. As was, as Amazing. This was, was Cam, yeah. right? And um, anyhow, so he took us around to these, these different couples yes. that might provide um, a line of credit. You know, so I went around and, and, I, and, I, and I met, you know, five, six different couples and explained what I wanted to do. And, you know, and, and um, I think when they realized that I wasn't like some fly-by-night flake, which I'd be going, who is this? You know, exactly. And they realized, okay, we got, you know, we got a business plan and we're, we know what we're, we're about. Suddenly, like, so suddenly we had money in the bank to start a company. And, you know, that never happens. Yeah. You have the ideas. But what are you always lacking? The money. The money. Yeah, and yeah. where do you find it? So it was just happened to be at the right time, right? And so all this money. And then... It happened, and I was able to bring in headliners and, 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 and build from the local community of actors and everything. And so, and look, know, 23 years in North Bay is known for its summer. Well, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Program, the did theater, that, did the that theater, for six like seasons, that. right? You know, yeah. and, and then in the last season of that, I'd approached the then president of Canada, Barbara Taylor, about yeah, yeah. we needed an acting training program in, in the North because there was none north of Toronto. And again, so she gave me the green light. I researched it, developed curriculum, wow. got approved by the ministry, and we opened the doors. For, this is our 17th year, right? So I didn't realize you were part of that. Yeah, that, that was my, I created that, yeah. That's amazing. And, and so North Bay has been, it's been good to me. Yeah. I think I've been good to North Bay. Yes. It's, been, it's, been a, it's been a pretty good marriage, yeah. right? We have our fights sometimes, our squabbles. We need time away from each other as well, right? Sure. But, but, but it's worked, and right? leadership. So leadership. Um, in, in a town like this, because it's not a big city where you can no, just go no, around. No, no, no. Like, how, how, how's that been? Well, leadership, doing? first off, is... Um, Number one, but the whole focus is positivity, right? Mm. Belief in other people, wanting to inspire them. If you want people to come with you and go on the journey with you, 
you've got to make them feel engaged, empowered, and welcome, right? And, and I talk a lot to my students that, you know, yes, I'm, I'm, your, I'm your professor, whatever, but I'm really your coach. I'm your coach. I'm your guide on your journey of self-discovery. And I really prefer to look at like that, right? Amazing. Right? And that, so that way to bring around, you know, how you want to get a bunch of like-minded individuals to want to work with you, it's because, well, they also have to see your passion for it. Yeah. Because that's infectious. Yeah. Uh, your commitment, right? So you can't ask anyone to come along on your journey with you, right? If uh, you're not. If you're not putting in, there. you know, if you're not walking your talk, yeah. right? And, uh, and, and so I guess, I don't know, and I guess so some... So it's walking the talk. I like that. You know, you know and, I, and I don't want to sit here throwing around like, walk the talk. It sounds like I'm running for election. No. But, I don't, but I think it's, there's great truth in that, right? No, but, but if it's you know, the truth... It, you know, it is. You know, and, and I think that's how you... Um, and, there's, and there's lots of people like that in this community, right? For sure. In all different areas of industry and being that naturally lead because they have a vision and the vision is always of something better. Yes. That there's always something better. And it's, it's, it's it, you know, a life with meaning is important. Totally. And it is yeah. sustainable over 23 years. For example, when you do follow up, there is integrity because that's how it lasts. And without that integrity, without the vision, but mm -hmm. also the management know-how, the let's make this happen. You know. Well, you, and, you, and then what also happens too with it all is you get used to juggling a lot of projects or at the same time. And because you're so, it's easy just to fuel here. Well, look at this incredible facility you've created here, right? And you know that, you've got your fingers in all sorts of different pots right now, right? Yeah, trying to figure it out. Yeah. I hope one lights on fire well, soon. Yeah, but that's what we're all, we're doing that. And one feeds the other, right? Like, yeah. and, and like at theater in my writing, like the process is very similar, right? You know, as a director or an actor, uh, you're looking at a character, you're saying, yeah. what do they want more than anything, right? Yeah. What's their objective? Then you got to throw obstacles at them, right? Everything at them to try to defeat them. Yeah. Then they've got to figure out how to get around that obstacle and solve it. And then where do they end up? How are they changed by the end? So that's a character's journey in a play. That's a director's journey working with an actor. That's also a writer's journey in telling a story. And that is storytelling. So that's see how we, we right? ended the interview where we, we, we come started. right back with the triumph of the human spirit. It's like even we during know what fly we're season. doing. <laughs> that's what happens on when a, you work with a professional. On a good day. <laughs> on a good day, right? On a good thank day. Thank you so much, Rod, for Rod, for coming in. Oh, Richard, thank and you. Just chatting and like honestly, this went by so fast. I think we tripled the time we're supposed to do, but that's okay. <laughs> we're putting it all out because whoa, power whoa. went out. Uh oh, uh oh, the power went out. Uh. In the building. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! The lights just went out in Georgia, as they say. Well, that was kind of that was kind of freaky. <laughs> kind of weird. Kind of was, I think it was a little mystical moment, right? Just whoosh. Yeah. Or it was it was somebody saying, "Carly, Rich, shut no, up." No, forte, <laughs> forte. <laughs> <laughs> We're you gonna have you come for a second show. Very, and, or, and I'd like to involve your students too, because there's so much to talk about with Canor. We didn't even talk about the. Ed I mean, we talked about the education as an educator part, but there there is other things that I would like to highlight down the road about amazing projects oh, yeah. at Canada sure. and, and, related and, you know, to arts and drama. And I've got an amazing slew of colleagues that are doing great and things there too. And you've got amazing too, right? colleagues. Well, yeah, we're, I would it's, love, a great, yeah. it's a great bunch. I would love to bring you know? more attention to that. But Darren is giving me the, like, we, got, <laughs> we do have to cap it. So again, thank you thank for being you. here. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your insights. And um, I hope you'll come back. And good uh, luck with, with, with your next projects. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I, I can say I, the writing continues in this, and there's some, there will be a surprise project, hopefully it's announced happening at Canada in a month or two, but I, I can't say anything yet about what that might look like. But okay. all I can say is it's exciting for the students, and will be for me, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it'll be a theater piece. And uh, yeah, the cool. rest is... Can you look into this camera and tell everybody where to find you specifically, sure. your website, sure. your Instagram, your Facebook, whatever you want people, where do you want people well, finding you? Well, if people want to find me, uh, I guess I have, I have a, I'm Instagram, they can find me, they can find me on Twitter. What's the name? Oh, I got to remember. Oh, you don't that. know the names? That's the whole point. That's why I'm I getting know. you to look. I think Ron I think. Carly. So I will know my um, website here. If you want my, my, my yeah. author's website is real simple. It's simply rodcarly.com. Dot ca. That's real easy to find. Okay, 
And there's lots and of And from there, there you can find everything. Yeah, you know what? Actually, yes, on my website, I've got a link to how you, where all my everything else is. Darren, you make his website pop up all oh, over the place. Oh, Thank man. you. And Darren, thanks for everything you're doing to make this show happen. You really are a rock star. Um, thank you everybody for subscribing, checking the channel out. I really, really appreciate it. Share it with your friends if you want. But you know, um, we're going to be back soon enough. Rod, let's do it. Love to. And folks, be well and well read. Yeah. <laughs>